Listen, fashion is important. I booked it to Hatsuno Village the second I could, just so I could hit up the Kochi Dai shop. I am the most frequent customer there, because I love mixing and matching my outfits and colors to make them look the best. I want to share my favorites. We may disagree or have our own favorites, and I'd actually love to hear your favorite outfits and armor in the comments below. So thanks so much for liking the video, subscribing for more content in the future, and let's begin. In one of my videos going over the ring garland's purpose, I got a lot of comments asking about what clothes those are. It's the stealth mask dyed white, the ember shirt dyed black, and the frostbite armor pants. I love the way this looks, and the frostbite armor pants are a staple in like so many of my favorite things to wear. I mean, it probably is my favorite thing to wear. And if you want it yourself, you can find it in the Hebra Headspring Cave. And then there's also the other pieces of it around. The Ember shirt is in the Goronbi River Cave, and the stealth mask is in Kakariko Village, of course. For a more casual and relaxed evening, I like slipping into the blue lobster shirt, which you can get in Lurlin Village from an underwater chest. <gasps> There's a number of clothing items that can't be dyed, a lot of them being previous Link outfits and such. Like, they're iconic enough, they're supposed to be that color, don't change it, do not mess with it. But I can't say I wouldn't be curious about what a red lobster shirt would have looked like. What's your go-to color? Like, is there one that you frequently enjoy seeing? Because for me, I think it's white. I always want to see what the armor looks like with a white dye, and it's a staple. The glide shirt is a super fun, as a like, just as a design, looks great in many colors but I find myself drawn to the white one the most. The front, however, lacks the white color since it's covered in straps and other things for gliding. Even the dangly things is a nice touch and reminds me of the thingies on the paragliders. And wow, the new glide set's awesome one in action. Like, the way you can glide like a sugar glider across Hyrule and some tight controls and maneuvers once it's been upgraded up, it's fantastic. Along with the no fall damage once it's been upgraded up, that's incredible. Also, going back to the white color point, the black Hylian hood that was probably your first clothing purchase as well looks great as white, and I went so far into the game before finding out how you get the coveted hood down look. Simply go talk to the fungi fashionista, she'll drop it down for you. Of course, I'm speaking of Cece, and yeah, her headpiece is magnificent, and I love seeing Link in it. I remember early in the game, I was so eager to get it and wear it all the time. And another set I was gunning for obtaining early was the Royal Guard Armor set. Like, I love the look of this whole outfit, and I want it so badly. I totally did. I saw it in CC storage room, just sitting there, longing for it, and I wanted it badly enough to go find the loose pieces that are scattered across the Hyrule Castle, dodging monsters left and right, cautious but determined. I mean, nowadays, yeah, it's no biggie, but just starting out the game, I was risking my life out there, let's say. But later I learned that, yeah, you can get some from Cece once the whole election thing is over and she takes them out of the storage room. I love adding the Royal Hylian cap to different outfits as well, including part of the Gloom outfit. The Gloom armor is iconic. It stands out. I mean, just look at that hood. But surprisingly, I only use the shirt mostly to pop on and the Hylian cap as well, as well as some like dark pants of some kind. The pants are kind of weird in different ways. I like the way the cut sleeves flow behind you. And they aren't cut sleeves. I don't know how to ex explain that. They're like ribbons. I'll just say ribbons <laughs> almost. You know what I mean. I like it a lot. The pants are kind of weird in all ways. Like I think the only color I like for them is black and sometimes white when I feel mummy vibes, which is rare. So I usually just stick to dark pants like from the Dark Link set. Both the Gloom Armor and the Dark Link are available via bargain or statues in the depths or trapped at Lookout Landing by Josha. If I'm not feeling the Highland cap, I still need an accessory sometimes, like earrings. The Gerudo Town Jewelry Shop has beautiful topaz earrings and opal ones. And let me say, the Gerudo jewelry got me so excited when I first found them. Obviously, all the armor pieces in this game have a purpose and are extremely useful. Like, I love that in and of itself. You're constantly having to change around clothing and use a lot of them for many different things, and I really love that. But like I said, I'm just going for looks and aesthetics right now. I love the idea of jewelry, and it makes so much sense. It would be awesome, though, to have, like, pendants or necklaces or even bracelets. If I want some sort of pendant necklace, my option is the Tingle shirt. I do already love the skin-tight green shirt with a stopwatch dangling down, though I'm not so keen on the straps on the back of it and the image. I don't know what the image quite is. I know obviously it's in it's Tingle, but hey, I'm just saying. Still, the Tingle shirt is one of my favorites to mix with outfits and stuff. The Mystic Clothing Pants are another. I do love the whole set of it too. And this was an outfit I saw in like thumbnails after launch, you know, one of the like early days, and it brought me so much curiosity 
curiosity and wonder. I like that we can dye the headpiece and have it be a totally separate color if you want. The pants just remind me of pajamas, like being so baggy and comfortable looking. And I put them on with other outfits, like the dark tunic, no, the dark tunic, along with the fierce deity mask, since the light blue cap kind of matches the pants. And I just enjoy the contrast to the black with it as well. And when it comes to the mystic headpiece, I like the black dye with it, and then the pairing with other dark things, especially with the evil spirit armor top, because wow, there's a cape. I'm stunned. It's dark, and it has a gold pattern on it, and when the light hits it, I just get so happy to see it flow so beautifully along with the headpiece. It's kind of the same joy you see in a ribbon things on the gloom shirt, in action, flowing around. Now I'm sure you know that you can find and wear the headpieces of the divine beasts of Breath of the Wild in Tears of the Kingdom. Out of all of them, I like running around with the Valruta and Valmedo masks, helmets. They're cool on their own, but recently I did learn that if you wear the corresponding divine beast mask with the sage, the sage will actually don the mask that their ancestor wears. Seeing Tolan wearing this big Rito Zonai-esque mask is incredible. This feels like such a small detail that I can't believe I missed. Again, I went so far into the game. While the divine beast masks are cool as their own statement pieces for an outfit, know that you can at least match in some way with your sage and they will wear something too. That's something I like to see. And you know what else I like seeing? It's that backless dress that Link gets. I know I'm not the only one who has taken notice of it and loves it, but yes, it's the frostbite armor that has that. It's the image of the frosty dragon. It's that. Just as the ember set and the thundery one are based on the dragons as well, and the headpieces show off the different horns. One super interesting part of that is that I was surprised to see the ability to not only dye the headpiece, but like Link's hair as well. I mean, technically that's the headpiece, but I was so excited to see a black haired Link or a white haired one or whatever else. It's the closest we may have come to changing a hair color outright. But back to the thunder one, when I first saw it, I'm like, oh hell yeah, let me get the Raru outfit. I was so eager to go out and find it, but I didn't realize it was something you had to get till further into the game and part of the story. After I reached that point, I was super pumped to have it. It was only after seeing the frostbite and armor sets that I was obviously no, now know that it was in the image of the dragons. Still amazing, all three of them. But that's not the end of the unique outfits in this game. There's interesting ones like the froggy armor, this one took so long to get because it was locked behind my dick boss who holds them hostage until I work with Pen and his tiny bird sources and publish on the mists surrounding Princess Zelda. I was excited to finally get the armor set and even colored it bright pink because I like that you can also get the bonus sleeve part of it being purple. I was pumped to finally be able to climb damp rocks in the rain, but I was met with some frustration at times because I'm still slipping and sliding and I don't like it. Anyway. The semi-aquatic friendly armor set was interesting and kind of reminded me of the Zora armor as well. The Zora armor set isn't new, but it does make you look like a Zora, at least the headpiece does. I'm talking about it now because I like it white, especially the top headpiece, because I've never seen an actual white Zora, you know? It's like I'm seeing something I shouldn't be seeing here. I don't know, I just want to mention it. Another headpiece I love wearing though is the Lionel mask. You can get various monster masks from Colton in exchange for various Booble Gem exchanges, and while the Bokoblin Mobla and Lizolfos masks weren't anything earth shattering, aside from the small noises when you wear them and move. Listen! The new Horoblin mask is also available and also includes the small noises, as well as fun poses in resemblance to the monsters when Link wears them and stands idly. And the absolute best one for that is the Lionel mask. Not only do I get to run around like Link is a furry now, but he also strikes the best Lionel pose when he stands in place. The mask is awesome to wear, and the little details like that make it even better. But I want to end on something special. I mentioned the idea of Link being a beast with the Lionel mask cosplay, but what if I told you there was an armor piece that made Link into full beast mode? Okay, you may or may not have seen this guy before, but look at this. This is the ancient hero's aspect, and it's my favorite thing to wear now because it took so long to get. In order to get it, you have to complete all 152 shrines. That's all the shrines across the map, including 32 that are also in the sky. I had to stare at a map and compare it to my own, start finding the general locations for where all these shrines are. I found out that there's a lot of cave shrines. No wonder I missed them. And there's a lot of cases where the shrines involve fetching the crystal. 
Now, although it was a lot to do 60 shrines in like two days, I had fun. There were definitely exciting ones like having to snowboard down a really snowy mountain slope through rings of light. I thought that was pretty exciting. Dodging monsters and whatnot. Fetching a crystal that was around a Hinox's neck. Sometimes they're inside monster hideouts. I probably wouldn't have naturally found them. There's even familiar characters around some shrines like the Blood Moon fanatic guy, I guess, who was locked into a cage, held hostage by the monsters at this hideout across from the shrine. The one guy, Sasan and Finley, who are on a treasure hunting outing together and seeking out a shrine just as I am. But this guy, this silly guy, can't make it over without my help in piloting his raft. He also freaks out if I try and rotate it or, you know, move it too much. Eventually, though, eventually, we reunite them and we can access the shrine. My very last shrine I had to do was involving the Yiga clan. Talking to the Blade Master while in the Yiga uniform and undergoing this master test that they've got, which involves seeking out five points on the map, which holds spots where you will make an offering of mighty bananas. You've got to go all over the area, and there's even monsters like Atalus at the last one I had to drop bananas at. But I just quit quickly dropped them and then got the hell out of there as fast as possible. And once returned, the Blade Master allows you into this secret little room and there's a whole shrine back there to get. Thankfully, many of the shrines I missed were ones you had to scope out, discover, or do specific tasks for them. So a lot of them were just Raru's blessings. And I like that. And once you finish the last shrine, all 152 you get the message saying that you have completed them all and that this is the final one. You get a reward that's waiting for you at the Temple of Time. Now, I felt a little sad about this shrine shut down and going quiet, signifying it's the final one and this quest is over. It's all over, but heading to the steps of the Temple of Time and up those steps was nostalgic. And in the very same clothes that Link gets in the beginning, reminiscent of guards for the ancient Hyrule, leading up the steps, trying to outrun the silly little construct was easy enough. And then getting back to the shrine statue and behind it, you finally get to kick the final chest for this and receive the hero's aspect armor. It looks like three masks. And once you put it on, it's on. Link is transformed into the ancient hero. Who is the ancient hero that saved Hyrule? I wish I knew more. I wish I knew why it looks like a Zonai Hylian infusion, why it has a tail, what's happening. I love all of this, but it just leaves so many questions, and I really hope we learn more about it in the future. But until then, enjoy this beast in all its glory. It has the same armor as the charged one like that Link can wear with the Zonai stuff, but the hero has the green Zonai bits as well and that blazing red hair and tail, along with beast paws and quite a lengthened muzzle. Either way, it's so cool to look at and to wear. And that's the final reward for such a big feat of completing every single shrine. I wanted to include it here because to me, this is the ultimate armor set. Something to put on that changes everything to where Link is not even Link anymore. It's like you're playing a whole new character completely in a different game. And that's fun to look at. Either way, I hope you enjoyed it. Please tell me your thoughts as well and some of your favorite items to wear. Also, if there's any like favorite colors you have or, you know, tell me what looks good in yellow because I haven't found anything. But No, but yeah, let me know your favorites and tidbits you want me to know. But yeah, I appreciate you watching so much. So thank you again. And I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.